Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from Divination Counseling Service. Back after a long hiatus, but a very needed time off, so I could re-examine a few things. And today, to start back, I'm going to take the new moon of August 27th, and we're going to look at it more about the asteroids than I am going to be predicting. Of course, through just going through the asteroids, the angles and the Aries point today, really to kind of become more, what I want to say, conversational or more fluent with the asteroids. So my goal for this video and proceeding forward is that when I present information, that I really keep it to an educational concept. So I want to look at everything as, as I am a teacher, and that's what I do. So we're going to look at how I would go about dissecting a chart. Um, I decided to start with a new moon chart. I was thinking about doing return charts where you combine two charts, and I think I'll get to that eventually but I'm going to start back rather slowly. So I'm going to do a video today, but I'm not really sure when I'm going to do my next one. So I'm going to really take my time with these. I began to really look at the site and the things that I'm most excited about, and I'd love to hear from you on this, is that I really love doing things like the horary sequence or the asteroid sequence because I am a teacher and having to teach the basics of asteroid astrology is exciting to me. I'm not really a personality, so I'm not going to entertain you with all that's coming up, but rather I would rather instruct you on ways in which you can either benefit from what I'm teaching for your own education or your own entertainment if this is a subject matter that you just like to have fun with. I've also, uh, will probably be doing more tarot. I haven't done any tarot in a couple of years. And so I think I'm gonna go back and again, everything will be more instructional. I have, have actually taught both astrology and tarot successfully in my sojourn, my journey, if you will, as an astrologer and a tarot reader. So enough of that. Um, I want to get right to it. We're going to be looking at the August 27th new moon. And I do want to bring up one thing about that right away because there's a reason I think that I'm starting with this particular chart. Uh, it's an ironic thing, actually. This new moon features not just a Sun-Moon combination, but a Adamitis-Mars combination as well. So when you, and we will do this, well, when you put this on the dial, all four show up when you put it on the Sun axis. That is relevant to what we're going to be experiencing in the next month. So I want to start with that. So let's begin. I am going to be looking at a chart of Washington, D.C. I am also going to look at the angles of the chart. I don't normally do that, but I want to start doing that because there's a process by which I read charts when I work for clients. And I want to show more of what my process is because it's been years in the making. It's a structure that is constantly being redefined, but is being constantly perfected as well. So let's jump in and look at what we have for the month coming up. So this is August 27th, 2022. First, we're gonna look at DC, then we're gonna look at the Aries point. So as I begin, this chart, I really want to stress how, first of all, how much this moon and sun, which fall into the second house, which is the house of finance, is affected by Mars and Edimitas, which show up in this particular chart in the 11th house. So it's like money is affected by our associates, our organizations, 
Okay, so they're going to play or how much action. So in other words, if your money, your income is reliant on your ability to, to act, Mars, then you have to understand that it's going to be affected by the 11th house, which is other people, your associations, the organizations you're associated with, and Adamitas is running with Mars, which can mean things like specialized uh, work, specialized actions, but it's also diminished actions, diminished ability to act. Because when you think about Adamitas, and one of the reasons why I really want to do the videos is more because I want to discuss those things such as Adamitas, which are not readily used by astrologers in a common way. It's really interesting because I work with a bunch of astrologers who do that, but yet when I go out on the internet, I really don't see a lot of this being done. And in order for us to teach it to the next and up and coming astrologers, we need to make the work more available. So that's my objective. So Adamitas, which is again in the 11th house, here it is, 3 degrees 43, literally, literally, literally about 17 uh, minutes from Mars. It is kind of indicating that people are blocked in their energy. Now, if you work with stone, that might be a good thing. But then again, if you're in construction, it could be stone or boulders that will hold up a project. And it might even be held up because other people want to work with these boulders, if you will. So the other thing that I think is rather interesting um, in this configuration, and since we are, I hope, going to really concentrate on what I have to offer you, which isn't readily available out there, is that Uranus, or, I'm sorry, Urania, the planet, the asteroid of logic, if you will. Yes, Uranus is here also, but I'm not talking about that at all right now. But Urania, which is right here at 335, is only 25 minutes from Mars and literally, what is this, eight minutes from Urania. So one of the things that it makes me wonder about is if people aren't blocked by logical thinking. In other words, I'm not going to move forward because I don't think this is a logical move to make. Because when you're dealing with Urania, you are dealing with logic. Okay? But you're also dealing with things like astrology. So it might be, hey, wait, I don't want to move yet until I can examine the astrology. Or it's computer programming. Well, we really can't get further with this until we deal with the software, okay? And it doesn't mean that you won't get anything done, although some of us will have a harder time getting things done. What it could mean is, is that what does get done is very specialized in order to help things move more smoothly as they move forward. I thought, and what you, these things, this four degrees, three minutes, is really affected by these because on the dial they all show up together. So it's pretty interesting actually and it's um, pretty exciting to be able to explain that. Now uh, as um, somebody who is um, interested not just in what this uh, information is telling us here in Gemini, but what is it showing as we move toward the signs of either Pisces, where we don't really have anything, at least not yet. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I have my list right here. And if I were to put anything in there, and to be honest, there really isn't. The closest that we would get would be uh, an asteroid called Lima, and Lima's about being nice and about how you get more with honey than with vinegar. So it's like, a to me, it's a direct 
reflection of that particular saying. So I'm not going to count that because it's about four degrees away. When you're doing this kind of work, you really want to stay within a degree if you can, but you can go out as far as about two and a half degrees and it would still be really accurate. But as I look from Gemini to Sagittarius, there is a little bit here and it's interesting because it comes with Pandora, which is surprises. And that's only at two degrees, but if we're going to go out two and a half degrees, Pandora is definitely in there. So we can expect surprises. And you know, what's interesting is some of these delays and some of this, uh, what I want to call, because it's like a decompressing. So, you know, there's a decrease issue with Adamitas that might actually come as a surprise. But what might be the decrease is, is that people, some people are going off on their own. And that could be one of the issues to why there's a, a decrease, specialized work. So you see, it all can be knitted together in one big story. Now, this is going to be true, this particular story, regardless of where you live in the world, because I'm looking at an axis more than I am the houses. Now, if we add the houses in, which I think would be a smart thing to do, we would see that Pandora and um, Proserpina, no, that's, per that's Persephone. Yeah, I get them mixed up. It's Persephone when you've got the two arms. And um, Persephone um, is, it's almost like it's a surprise going, I got to do this journey on my own. And that might happen by surprise to the individual because it's a reflection of the new moon. And the new moon might be saying on this new journey, you got to go more out on your own. And that might be surprising to some people. I think that's one of the reasons I actually have decided to do a, a video today. I had a little bit of an inspiration. I was listening to some of my favorite people online and they were talking about being true to your genuine self as a way to deliver your purpose. But that when you start to try to please other people or do it for other people, that you might not be true to yourself. And what's really interesting about this is that we are looking at the 11th house, the house of other people, associations, who we're associated with versus our own expressions. I think that there's a lot of us that need to take time, as I did, to reflect what it is that I feel is my purpose. And in astrology, I really do feel like I have a strong purpose to educate, to educate particularly in the arena of the trans-Neptunians, the asteroids and all of the lesser used tools that we have as astrologers, particularly modern astrologers. Okay. And dealing with modern astrology. So that's really interesting and it affects our money directly or our self-worth because sometimes money's not involved at all. Sometimes it's just a matter of us valuing ourself. And maybe our friends are not value evaluating us fairly, or they're not looking at our genuine selves, but perhaps what it is that we're putting out there in the world. And that might not be, that might not be good or not might not be for the best as they say. So it's really interesting because it involves a lot, you know, three personal planets, you know, the Mars is also considered a personal planet and how Adametus, which is a trans Neptunian moves very, very slowly is teaching us something right now. And along with Urania, which is that ability to be logical. Now, what's interesting is, is that with Urania, with Adametus, um, it's interesting that I want to specialize my astrology because if you think of decrease, you think of a decrease of logic or maybe even a decrease in astrology. Uh, that is possible. And actually one of the reasons I can do this is because I'm not doing charts at the moment. So hopefully I will be, and I'm going to definitely not be as active 
online as I had been because I want to do more quality work than quantity because I'm not really an entertainer and I only want to come on when I know I have a very clear and concise message for you, the listener. You, the student, depending on how you want to look at it. So I just wanted to go through that. I'm not going, I'm, I do want to point out that this chart is ruled by the sun. Okay. It has intercepted houses. This is DC. And right now, Scorpio and Taurus, Taurus, which is Uranus, um, have been intercepted. Uranus is not only retrograde, but it's intercepted. So in this particular month, I don't really expect Uranus to act in a normal way. That doesn't mean we're not being surprised. It doesn't mean we're not being affected by Uranus. I think we are. I just don't think it's acting in a normal way. And it may show up in the outer world or with us in the outer world. It could be in our careers, depending on what you do in a career. But it is tied up um, and it has been actually for about a month or so really running with the North Node, which would be sudden meetings and sudden encounters. And I'm not so sure that we even know the impact of those encounters because of the retrograde motion and the intercepted house. Now, this is only in DC charts, only affects you pretty much if you're on, I guess, the East Coast of the United States, but it's well worth mentioning. So um, uh, I do want to go through the sun rules this. We already talked about how the sun is in the second house. Now, interestingly enough, it is the money house. It's an opportunity perhaps to look at how we can make ourselves worth more. So that could be more money. Um, although, you know, right now an aspect to Adamitis, I'm thinking it might be money down the road more so than money immediately. So we're all looking at ways to use maybe specialized talents and abilities to share with others as a way to build up our self-worth, perhaps through specialized means. And it might be more toward the future because of the Adamitis, but it's definitely about creating that. Now, in the interim, because the sun being in the second house, I got to give you the other half, which is that you might spend a lot of money. So get ready. I can tell you that the new moon starts tomorrow. Today is the 26th. And last night we had to spend a lot of money on one of our pets. So, um, but I want her to get well. And so, you know, that's what you have to do. So get ready. There could be some real spending involved here. And um, ironically, uh, because of where the Virgo sun moon falls in my chart, it really is kind of fitting, actually. It's also in conjunct to um, Diana, which is animals. And so <laughs> it's a really strong in conjunct. Do I feel obligated to take care of my animals? Yes, I do. I love animals. And I really can't stand when I see one that is not well. I'm actually one of those people that cries when um, I hear bad animal stories or I pass by a dead deer or a dead animal on the street. I, I know that's really ridiculous. I actually come from a family where I'm not the only one who does that. But I, I have this such a feeling that we share this lifetime with these. And I want to refer to them what I think they are angels. And when I see something happening to our angels, I read a horrible story about duck beaks or how they cut horses hair with scissors and things like that. And I, I just, I almost can't talk about it because it, it really makes me get emotional. So just a little side story there, but this, this is about spending money. And I believe that because of the Adamitis and the Mars, um, specialized 11th house, but you'd really want to look at where this falls in your chart to see if that money would be worth it for you. Um, I think for most of us, it will be because it'll be about that specializing in some way. So that's uh, that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, because I kind of want to keep this moving and I want to try not to get off subject too much, is I do want to talk about um, the asteroids that are falling here. Okay, so I'm going to tar start talking about the ones that are on my paper 
And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to read any extras that I didn't hit. Okay, because I can't get all my asteroids on here. I have like a thousand other asteroids that I work with that just can't make it onto the list. So basically what we're doing here is we're looking at the fact that whatever is going on, there's a lot of it because abundantia is the A. That's my, my little symbol for it. And that happens to fall within the realm of this particular chart. As, uh, angle, as does Sappho. Now, interestingly, Sappho is in the 12th house out of sign. But it is about bonding. Now, in our world, bonding with people can occur in different locations because we can do a lot of our work over the phone, over the computer, in other words, remotely. It could be speaking about how we're bonding with somebody in a, in a remote fashion, okay? Because they are not, um, ironically, they're not in the sign of the ascendant and they're in the 12th house. So it's not something that's, in the first house or out in the world, it's something that's happening in the background. So I thought that was pretty cool. And like I say, there's a lot. Now, another asteroid that falls right here with bonding is that you might feel that you're finally making these connections that you're making, but sometimes you're going to feel, my goodness, it's a little too little and a little too late. So I'm not going to say that we're not going to be grateful for that. We're just going to maybe have a little bit of regret that it didn't happen perhaps sooner or in a bigger way. Okay. Now also running uh, right with um, Abundantia, which definitely needs to be talked about, is the idea of Eos, which is massive confusion. Okay, which also shows up in the Aries point. So we've got confusion with child, with Malit, which means there's a lot of wondering. Okay, now these are all around Abundantia. And one of the things that we're having a real problem with in this country, and yes, it is affecting DC, is a lack of teachers. There's reasons for that. I don't really need to go into it. I don't think it matters where you live in the world. You know that politics has really messed up our teachers. And as a result, and I don't blame them, they are leaving in mass. Now, this is a big deal in this chart. And it is coming in from the 12th house, which means they are working on it. But my feeling is, is that it is all happening behind the scenes because here we go. It's so beautiful when astrology works like this, but Mars at a meet, a decrease, a block. Let's start with banning books, you know, like you could do that in this age, but you can rile up parents that are not real informed or are not real accepting or tolerant of modern ways. I don't know how else to put it. I don't want to offend anybody, but there are people who are adamitos, thick-headed, okay? And they're, they're not able to kind of, they're, they're, they're not really able to move out of the way to kind of see what they're blocking. And look at that. I just love this, Mars Adam. I mean, it's so perfect. Oh, I just love when astrology works. Okay, so... We got a lot of people wondering what we're going to do about these children because there's chaos happening. Okay, that's, and you know what's interesting is Iyengar is one of the tools they're going to use. So Ad, Adamit is also talking about, and Iyengar moves us into here we go again. So there will be teacher strikes. There will be moves to organize, reorganize. And I got to be honest with you, Iyengar to me really speaks to structure. As a person who actually studied Iyengar yoga for a, a time, I'm, I'm more of a vinyasa myself, but for a time, um, real big in uh, the perfecting the technique of yoga, that's a technique to study because it's so structured and it really perfects each posture. So to me, that's what they're doing with regards to teaching. 
And by the way, um, there was a lot of problems. I actually got involved in studying bits about education when I was in college. And even in my senior year, I wrote a paper on what I felt were screw ups in education. I don't know how else to put it. Areas in education where we could really work better. I, I really feel like this country, you know, politically, we've ruined a lot of things in the last five years. Okay. Well, really it's been going on for 60, but let's look at just the last few years. It's come to our attention that many things are broken. And one of the things is our educational system. And though we're going through this really, really tough time right now, sometimes I think you have to go down to the bottom of the barrel before you can restructure Iyengar to make things better. And I do believe we're going to get there. Um, Crone does tell you, because Crone is there, the asteroid, that, um, that those teachers are, and look at this, off on their own, going on their own. They just, there's too much pressure. Volcanus is there. Volcanus is just pressure, pressure. Um, there's too much pressure. And then what happens is it puts pressure on authorities and Crone is a representation of the authority. So it's Crone the asteroid. Volcanus is the trans-Neptunian, as we can see. Crone, which you cannot see, is the asteroid. It's on my list. You know, going off on their own, it's interesting because Williams shows up. And Williams is about humiliation, um, self-destruction. And um, I gotta be honest with you, um, Parents did this themselves. School boards did this themselves. Governors did this themselves. And that is really obvious when you look at Williams, okay? So now decisions have to be made and competitions. Um, in some cases, in order to make decisions, people are gonna go backwards. Well, some of these decisions are great and some of them are like wackadoodle, okay? But that's how it's gonna be until it can be uh, really fixed, okay? Which will happen and it will happen soon. Um, basically, it talks about how things are gonna be done in pieces. Of course, it is particularly when it comes to education. So they really have to work this out and um, how they can nurture caretake and deal with parents because Cirrus is there also. So you think of Cirrus as the ability to take care of oneself, but it's also a parent-child relations. It's also um, parents and that whole idea. Remember that Cirrus is a mother and so motherhood is a factor. Now, there has been just an election and the results were Democrat. And I just want to flip this into a different subject. While we're talking about parents and mothers in particular, we are also in chaos and decisions and how people are bonding even at distance. Here we go again, because of the authorities, we're also talking about Roe versus Wade. Okay, so I, I don't want to get too far removed from all the political things that are going on because when you're talking about DC I, and, I, and these asteroids, they mean everything they can, okay? So the other side over here, and, and by the way, this goes six, it goes 10 degrees either way, okay? So all of this, just so you understand this, is in here. The 28, see all of that. So you go 10 degrees above it, uh, an angle and 10 be degrees below the angle. That's how it works, okay? So as we're over here and I'm going to read, and this is always a phase or a chapter of what I do when I do charts. Look at the angles. Here in this particular arena, now on this chart, we're not looking at as many spots, okay? Because it only goes to 16 and it looks like there's only like three, four things here, but that's really not true. There's quite a bit more when I get to my paper, but let's start with what we see. Along with Valentine, now these are all not going to work exactly like I might be describing them because they're all in retrograde, meaning they have the optical illusion of going backwards. But remember that the word illusion is a factor. So these things will work 
but maybe not the way we expect. So you have Letitius, which is telling us that there's interruptions, possibly by other people, or other people are disrupted. It affects us. It causes complications. It causes intrigue. So we have Letitius, the interruptions, but we also have the intrigue and the complications set up by Arachne, okay? Now that can also represent things like knitting and sewing and any form of weaving and weaves. And as a person who sews, I can understand that, okay? So, you know, I, I actually am hoping I've got some sewing things going on for myself. So the reality is that um, the, this particular little lineup is also kind of further describing a little bit the story that I started talking about in the very beginning with our own self-expression versus the dynamics of the group. And here we see interruptions and complications. I mean, isn't astrology wonderful? And how interruptions and complications apply a lot of pressure. Because once you start reading one angle, you have to incorporate all the angles. Now the conversations become more complicated, more in depth. We're also looking at um, Shiva uh, with this. And Shiva is telling us as I kind of described already, that sometimes we have to destruct in order to reconstruct. So you have to tear down in order to rebuild. But this particular little asteroid is also referring to noise. And uh, let's be honest, some of us are very sensitive to noise and really, you know, that can be a very annoying asteroid to find, you know, in your chart. Uh, because of the noise factor. I am somebody who has that in a, in a spot where I, I really do have a hard time with noise. I also have ear issues. So um, a lot of people think, you know, there's loss to my hearing. Uh, actually, sometimes I think it's the reverse. So I, you know, have holes in my ears, but it seems to magnify sound. So there's a lot of different ways we can look at that. The other way we can look at Shiva is withdrawing. Um, something that I did for the whole summer. <laughs> took off. So um, I think that for some of us, as things get more complicated, particularly with other people, we might want to withdraw from them. And remember that we did find um, Persephone, uh, Prosopina down here, which, um, no, it's Persephone, same thing. Prosopina is going to be in the Aries point, so don't worry, they're both here. Um, but it's really about kind of going off on your own, doing something on your own. Maybe it's just too complicated, do it on your own. Uh, so you've got that. Now, along with those three, there is an asteroid here called Abel, um, Abelonia. Now, remember over here, we talked about how Abundantia, there's a lot. Well, Abelonia is about expanding too. So it's interesting that people are withdrawing and they're specializing and they're taking time off, going off by themselves in order to expand. Apollonia is considered a business asteroid. It's an expansion. It's, uh, Apollonia is an L with like a Gemini on the L hook. And as you can see from, I'll show you, the asteroid and the trans-Neptunian are the same. So let me go to Scorpio, here we are. See, we have a Jupiter, a figure four, or an L-shaped. I, I say what it is, it's Jupiter and Gemini, okay? Which is really interesting because Jupiter is not even good in Gemini. But it gives you the idea that you take Jupiter and then you just double it up. And that is how we can see Apollonia as well. So we have a lot of interruptions. We have a lot of complications. Business brings complications. Again, all of these things are in retrograde. Photography is also here, photography. And what that is, is that means that pictures can, and now remember it's also retrograde, so it could be pictures in your head, but it could also be pictures that we see that trigger things, or there could be an interruption 
with those pitchers. The other factors that we want to consider here are Perkin, which is, again, retrograde, which is that people aren't even themselves. They're faking it. I'm telling you, they're faking it. All right? So people are a lot of times putting on facades. They're pretending. That's Perkins. Check. Maybe they're pretending as a way to check or put a check on something or it's related to money. And they're, again, not being completely genuine. I'll just say that because I think the word genuine is really instrumental in this chart where we see the sun and moon. Henderson tells us that people in general are antisocial. And I'm going to be honest with you. I've done a little bit of research. I also, I'm not a, a Hellenistic astrologer, but I'm so interested in it. Sort of like horror. I can't say I'm a horror astrologer, but I love it. And I'm interested in it. That's how I feel about Hellenistic. And one of the things that has come to our attention is, is that the outer planets, Saturn on, are all in what they refer to as antisocial planets. And that's an interesting concept because what it means is, is that for several years, and we're in it, we've been in it, um, we are all antisocial. And that is why all there's so much division. Now, ironically, there's a reason why every now and then it happened in the late 1800s as well. I think 1870s was the last time. Why that happens is, is so that we can evolve. We get away from each other so that we can do our personal evolutions, okay? And then when we come back together, which would be in 2026, because by then we'll be more social, Jupiter hits Leo, wow, you know, we'll all be more social. Um, I think that uh, we'll, we'll be different people. I know that a lot of things will be different. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a, a, a better feeling at that time and we'll be able to be more social. So we can't really expect anyone to be real social and outgoing right now because I don't think anybody has it in them, not to for a duration anyway. So as I go to the mid heaven, which is at uh, 24 degrees, 33 minutes of Aries, and then I go to... Uh, 2433 of Libra, we're going to look at different sets of things. Like, for instance, let's start down here. Personally, guys, we're all invested with Zeus right now. Zeus is a seed, right? Zeus is a seed. It's planting seeds. It's, it's also Zeus's guns and explosions and so sometimes, you know, I think we're planting seeds, but I also think we're carrying around time bombs, ticking time bombs uh, because of everything that's going on. And I think a lot of people are angry. And one of the reasons why a lot of people say get away from the news, um, because you're not going to be happy with what you're hearing right now. None of us will be. And we are in an antisocial period. So we're not going to agree with people. I've heard things and people say things and particularly in television, my mouth is down here. It's like my jaw just rough. Where are you coming from? But yet that's what's going on right now. So in our view here, uh, asteroids you can't see. Well, we do have, but we should be able, oh, I'm up here, that's why, okay. Um, I did wanna start with that, but I wanna go back up here because see, look at that. Um, Chiron, not Jupiter. <laughs> Chiron just makes it. And because um, uh, 15 degrees is within 10 degrees of, of uh, 24. So it makes that mid heavens like nine degrees. Um, you see Chiron for turning points. Now it is retrograde. I think we are in real turning points. And this is just rewards, okay? So it's really interesting. It's like, that's a just reward, okay? We are questioning things, which you can't see because Sphinx isn't on there. We're questioning, reading what I wrote here, huh? 
You know why? Because we have to question things because we have faulty perceptions. Part of our, we have faulty perceptions about the future. And that makes us very, um, it makes us question things. Let me see what I'm missing here. And it's, you know, the interesting thing is, is that we question whether or not we can actualize things because it's Merlin. Merlin is the magician. These two are in retrograde. So we're questioning that ability. It's a turning point in our lives. We question our ability to actualize things because we have faulty perceptions. And there are, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's almost like it's a not. It's just not happening. So if you're on the far right, you're not seeing things manifest. You you want the end of Roe versus Wade and, you know, you want the banning of books. Well, that's not going to happen. We're in a digital age. So you're not really seeing that. And that's going to be an effect for us. So that gives you um, an explanation there of really how a lot of frustration people are feeling. There's a lot of complaints. The asteroid Zeus is up here while the trans-Neptunian Zeus is down here. So there is a lot of explosive energy. Does that mean that we're going to have idiots with guns? Probably, but again, remember a lot of retrograde here. So things don't act the way that they would. And I think that these people would create bigger problems for us if they could. I just don't think they're going to be able to. I don't. I don't because justice is also very prominent at that particular juncture. Okay, so it is more about justice in the future. And I think that people really want justice for the future. So as I was saying, if you're real right wing, you're not seeing what you want come true. But if you're like me on the other side, I'm not real happy with what I'm seeing either because all I keep seeing is that every time something happens that the right is able to upset the apple cart, I am reminded how broken our system is. So, and I am not the only one. So that's, um, that's a pretty good description of a lot of what's going on. The Just looking at this, and I'm realizing I'm taking too much time here, is that down here you have this idea um, right here of um, Hera, which is partnerships. And one of the ways in which we are going to be able to actualize business, because Apollon the trans-Neptunian, though it's out of sign, is here as well. So you see how we have a repeat pattern. One of the things I love about astrology is when the pattern continues to repeat, repeat, repeat. And we have Apple on there. So uh, particularly in business, partnerships are um, a focus. Now, it could be that uh, relationships, you know, marriages um, are a focus uh, as well and, and how they might affect business. So it can work both ways. Um, I can tell you that in our personal lives, uh, one of the issues that we're going to find is an issue is that very often uh, it's the narcissistic actions, whether it's our own or those of somebody else, are the tripping points. Narcissism. It's also narcissism and this aspect of narcissism, and by the way, these are not retrograde, that will bring defeats, okay? So defeat will come through, uh, I think, narcissistic behavior. So be very careful that whatever you do, you're not doing for selfish means. You really have to analyze that. It also is referring to overreactions and how here, um, no, we don't have that on. I don't have that asteroid anymore. Darn. Uh, Ophelia. So Ophelia is running here, and Ophelia is overreactions. I can't believe I don't have her anymore. Um, she's one of my favorites. I have her on my list, so I never lose her, but I do feel like Ophelia is uh, definitely a factor um, right now in what's going on. So be aware that people will overreact. Um, it is a time when you do want to keep a check on overreactions and particularly how you might give something away through body movement, gestures. Um, it's also talking about how some people will talk and talk and talk and talk 
as a way to create chaos. I think we've been seeing a lot of that. And that you have to be really careful because a lot of what's going on, particularly on the internet, could be related to repeating things to get that chaotic, that chaos going. Now remember, Aurora and Eos both show up here on angles and they both represent scattered energies. So that is what we're looking at with this chart, just making sure I got everything. Champions down here, and I do believe, and it's down here close to here, that our, our champions are going to be our partners and that we're finding partners that will champion us. What's interesting is, is that champion is also in the Aries point. So if I just flip this to this Aries point, and I just want to show you what I had seen earlier. Um, hold on, I'm not there yet. Hold on. There it is. There, oh, not quite, not quite. There it is. Ah, see how everything shows up? Boom, okay? Look at this lineup and this axis. It's just incredible. Now, just, you know, because, and I already did look at a lot of this, but if you're looking at this and you were to add, um, say, 20 to 30 to this, you would have this at... Um, 66 okay so oh, i'm sorry 86 so 86 going on 87 right here would be the other this right here is the other part of the ass uh, ass, ass, ass axis okay i can't even talk so just really quickly just going from the aries point and just to point this out aries point is at 22 30 7 30 and 15 degrees fixed, okay? And this is the world. I can tell you that the whole world is going to be excited about things that are happening in the world. So not just here, but maybe in England, they, you know, they're looking at elections coming up. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on that people are excited about. Some of it will feel very destined, but what feels destined is in some cases, the people that fall on their face. And this could be people that, you know, like from Trump to what's his name, Boris Johnson to, you know, all these people, Putin, you know, it's almost destined that these people are, you know, going to mess up. Um, it's also referring to, here we go again, mothers, parents, okay, and uh, it brings up that Roe versus Wade concept. It, it's interesting because health issues are there as well as, as conjuncting the mind. So mental health could be something that's being looked at in addition to health. But I told you Shiva and Shiva were there. And um, the other, um, so they come in there, champion is in there. So there's repeatable themes. So it's really a good time to take a vacation if you can. That's the Shiva, Shiva. But one of the things it's really saying is really withdrawal at night because Newt is really accented in the Aries point this time. And Newt is nut. Newt is the way I like to say it, but it's nut. Nut, Newt, nut. But it represents nighttime, and it represents a um, uh, Egyptian uh, person. Egyptian, um, I want to say entity, but you could have actually been a ruler at some time. But anyway, it's a woman. And it's nighttime. And what I see is um, in Aquarius, uh, we have both Shiva and night. So at night, try to take some time by yourself. That would be my greatest advice to you at this time. So I'm back and I, I'm just going to say goodbye. I've taken up enough time. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something, most importantly. I want to thank you for watching the video. I want to thank all of the people that have been subscribing to my site and all the people who have been faithfully coming to my site since I haven't even been around. Uh, thank you all. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider becoming one. And if you would, like, share, comment. Most importantly, comment. I love hearing from you guys. That's the best part. Take care. And until we meet again, I wish you all only happy reading.